you took on an iconic character, Elvis Presley. What, what drew you to this role and how did you prepare for it? I don't really remember a moment in my life where Elvis wasn't a part of it. I, I remember my grandmother watching his films when I was a kid. I, uh, blue suede shoes. I, I don't even remember the first time that I heard it. But that's the thing about Elvis is he's sort of become the wallpaper of society. And he's such a superhuman figure. So to me, it was the curiosity of finding out who is he as a human and delve into studying everything I could on him and watching every bit of footage countless times and reading everything I, I could and talking to as many people as I could and really getting down to who he was as a man. And that's, that's what I found really intriguing. I had many moments during the year and a half that I was preparing where I felt, I felt, you know, really uh, locked into his essence but the moment of truth is when you have to get in front of the camera and uh, and so I didn't know what was gonna happen and I, I felt like my career was on the line my life was on the line and I was so nervous beforehand I was in the dressing room uh, before I walked out and, and it, it dawned on me that Elvis his career was on the line. His life felt like it was on the line. He had the same feeling of nerves, I'm sure. And, and so when I went out there, I wasn't trying to push all that away. Instead, I, I just could use that. And when I was on stage and I looked down at the leather on my arms and uh, at the audience and, and uh, the microphone in my hand, and it was an out-of-body experience because I, I just felt like I was looking out of his eyes, seeing what he was seeing. Uh, but in this moment as though it was happening for the first time and it was really it transcended what I thought that would feel like and from that moment then then even though I was I you know I didn't sleep much the entire production because I felt the weight of it but uh, but I, I at that point knew oh I, I, I know we can get I, we can get there you know so that felt good how was it for you to interpret those early rock and roll records by Elvis well, there's an incredible amount of pressure, first off, <laughs> you feel, uh, and responsibility, and a desire to do him justice. A desire to do everybody who loves him justice. And I was so shy. I would never sing in front of anybody. I would, I would sing in front of maybe my girlfriend back in the day. I tell you, I don't think Elvis ever lost that nervousness. Mm. He never lost that vulnerability in front of an audience. And I think the love he gave to audiences and the love he got back was absolutely what was an attempt to fill that giant hole in his heart. So you're playing like such an icon, Elvis. Yeah. Were you musical as a kid? I, I, my dad gave me a guitar when I was 13 years old and yeah. I, I obsessed about it. I would play for eight hours a day. My fingers would bleed and I'd super glue them shut. Oh, and the I'd calluses. keep playing. And, yeah. Uh, but I never played for anybody. I, I w it was like therapy. You know? Oh, you were shy about so it? So shy. But you started acting kind of in a weird way, right? Was it your brother? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a stepbrother, and he got scouted at the Orange County Fair. Oh. And so, and we all thought, oh, he's going to be a movie star. Now's the, now, I mean, he's going to go off and do all these things. And so I just tagged along as he went up to this audition in Los Angeles. Yeah. And when they saw that my mom had another kid, they were like, he, you, does he want to do it too? My mom said, are you interested? And for, well, I don't know what came over me that day because I was so shy. But I, I said, yeah. And, and, then, uh, and then that got me into, it turned out it was a background talent agent. Yeah. So it got you into doing extra work on Nickelodeon shows. And yeah. Stuff. And that's, that's what got me into it. That's the door. Yeah. Everybody and then I got my first door. manager and, and started going to acting class. And acting class broke me out of my shyness in a way. Yeah. That so gave me an outlet for it, you know. So Baz, why did, why did you decide to make a movie about Elvis Presley? You know, someone like Shakespeare would take a very iconic, famous character and try and explore a larger theme. And if you want to explore America in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, you couldn't pick a greater, more iconic life than that of Elvis Presley. How do you take those traditional ideas of what rock and roll is and make a modern movie about Elvis. One of the things that we decided was that the music of Elvis pretty much before the 60s are recordings that you can't really use in a movie. That's the way they're technically recorded. So we made the exciting decision to have the actor playing Elvis sing early Elvis. And then the later part of it, it's, it's Elvis's actual voice blended. The phrase T-C-B yeah. comes up quite a bit. Does. What does that mean? 
And me taking care of business, it was a mantra that Elvis had. Two of the things that I think that are extraordinary about the American culture. On the one hand, invention, the mm. creation of the new. Two completely different things can come together and make something new. And honestly, that's rock and roll. And the other hand, you have the sell. In show business, when those two things are in a good balance, it's a healthy world. But I think what motivated me towards this film was in recent times, maybe one of those things has got a little bit out of balance. And, and the Colonel was absolutely, ultimately, only about the business. Can you explain to everybody how you got the role? Yeah, I, I sent Baz a tape. I heard that he was making the film. I sent him a tape of, of me singing Unchained Melody and playing the piano. God, I love that song. Such a beautiful song. Mm -hmm, classic. And he, uh, and he responded to it. And then I flew to New York and we, we met and we just talked for three hours. And, and then, uh, and then he said, "You want to come in tomorrow and read a couple scenes from the script?" And so I came in and read a couple scenes. And then he said, "You want to come in tomorrow and read and sing a couple songs and you want to sing Suspicious Minds?" And so I went home that night, practice, and I come back. We ended up doing that for five months. What? So it was unlike any audition, where it was just five months of it. That's a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and then, and then it came time for the screen test. Which, then it came time yeah. for the okay. You know, there comes a point where the studio has to sign off. Yeah. And there, you got to do the screen test, and so I I prepared everything and and got to the screen test, and Baz changed everything on me on the day. He he, right. I was supposed to do a couple scenes, and, and he changed the scenes, and changed all the words in the scenes, and and then I was supposed to sing three songs. He said, and then he starts describing the scene to me. And he's saying, you're gonna sing these three songs and they weren't the songs that I prepared. And so suddenly I'm on set and, and I go, Baz, I don't think I have the material that you gave me. And he goes, oh no, we changed it, but uh, I'll, get you, I'll get you new material. And then turns out he Bye. never got me new material and he starts filming while I'm learning everything. So then I start going through it and then he cut one of the scenes and he said, now we're gonna do you performing suspicious. And I realize now it's because that's he likes to be very spontaneous on set. Yeah, I so love it. I wanted to movie. see if I would if I would lose my mind and so I didn't think I got it. And then a week later I got a call and I woke up to Baz calling me. And I thought, okay, this is the moment. I either yeah. have it or I don't. And he's very dramatic in the way that he goes yeah. about things. And so he, he was he sounded kind of downcast and he goes, Oh hey, how Austin, mean. <laughs> I just wanted to be the first one to call you and say, Are you ready to fly, Mr. Presley? I thankfully had a long time to so, slowly chip away at, at things that were making me very nervous. And uh, I, I sort of threw myself in the deep end very early on, so by the time that I got there, uh, I, I was terrified before walking out on stage. But once I was on stage, it actually became some of my favorite days on set because, uh, because it becomes like this out-of-body experience where you feel the music and, you, and you're with the audience and it just is some of the greatest feelings. I, I loved it.